Hey guys, what's up? Are you one or zero here? So I think this is the best video I've created so far. Um, we are going to talk about that bypass rob gadgets in this video. So if you already watched the previous video that I mentioned about what I'm working on lately, I am trying to cover all the topics for OSE, Offensive Securities, Offensive Securities Beast Certificate on Advanced Windows Exploitation. So since last year, I've been spending a lot of time on Rob gadgets, heap exploitation. Um, recently, I also started working on kernel exploits, some browser exploitation, and very, very cool stuff. So Rob gadgets was one of the um, one of the topics that I started to OSEE preparation with. In the beginning, it looked very complex, but when you spend time on it, it becomes much easier or uh, much familiar. Um, probably easy is not the word. Um, I also checked online when I was first learning it, if there are videos on this. If you know me, you know that I'm a fan of videos. I like learning from them and that's why I'm creating these videos maybe to help um, our InfoSec community as well. So um, I just thought that since there is no video on actually showing the manual exploitation on how to write the rock gadgets, I said, that's the time. Let's let's start creating one. So in the weekend, I just created this, and with the edits, uh, the videos should be out on on the weekdays. Cool. So what we're gonna do here is that um, first we're gonna talk about a bit of rock gadgets. What is that bypass? Which system we're using? which application we're using. And um, we're going to start from pausing the application, writing a skeleton exploit, and then we're going to find which um, Windows API function we are going to use to build the exploit. We're going to talk about our plan, how to write the uh, ROP gadgets. And then we're going to create some um, ROP suggestions file, ROP.txt and ROP suggestions.txt under immunity folder. Uh, from there, what we're going to do is um, we're going to use the instructions that's already in the application or already in the DLLs um, that we can play around so we can have some meaningful instructions to achieve our goal. So with, with ROP, uh, with DAP bypass, what we're going to do. So let's talk about the theory of DAP and, um, and ROP a bit. So um, DEP is basically preventing you to execute any code on the stack. So what we were doing so far with the previous examples of um, vanilla stack buffer overflows, CH, egg hunting, et cetera, we were exploiting, uh, we were executing code on stack. With DEP in DEP turned on, you can't execute on any code on stack. So what you're gonna do, you can't even execute nops so you're like hopeless at that point. Um, not exactly. So we actually have all these instructions that we can use or play around to make it meaningful for our goals um, and, and memory. So we can actually use these instructions, play around with it. What does it mean? We will go to that part already um, to, to make something meaningful for one of the Windows API functions that we can use in our plan. Um, so I'm not the expert on this. There are amazing blog posts out there from Fuzzy Security, Carlin. Um, there's this guy that I'm following, Ombre. He's writing amazing blog posts as well. He's also referring to these, um, the source, let's say, um, blog posts like from Fuzzy Security and Carlin. They're really amazing. Go check it out. Before jumping into learning any of these techniques, I would definitely suggest you to read these blog posts, memorize it, print it, write your notes on it, literally like sleep with that note um, until you learn it completely and then you start applying your, your way to it. So in this video, we're gonna use a Windows 7 32-bit um, operating system and we're gonna use VU Player 2.49, um, which and our DAP is enabled. So we will be exploiting this vulnerability with DAP enabled. Cool. So let's look at the video and start talking about um, our way to our first drop gadgets. Cool. So the servant of system, I'm checking my IP address to use later um, with the Calibax. This is the U player that I'm already running in here. 
um, I'm going to start immunity, we'll attach it to it because I need to pause the application first to find the vulnerability, right, to scale to an exploit, et cetera, et cetera. So we're attaching to the process that's already running. Um, cool, let's see. Okay, okay, let's start the application with this little play button. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the PSFTP uh, under PuTTY application to transfer some files because our skeleton exploit will create and tree new files. And we need to transfer files between our color box, as you can see in here, with the IP address with the Windows box. So we are starting the connection with the open comment. Um, just write your username and password to connect to the um, to connect to your Kali box. Cool. I'm gonna go to my working directory, um, which we under a home, and I will be getting the files from there. So let's see. This is our um, skeleton exploit. Let's say. Um, it will create test and um, test of n3 u file. Um, I'm just going to send 1,500 a characters, and I will grab that n3 u file on my Windows box, and I will put this test of n3 u file on the u player. When I see that, um, I'm, when I send that, I'm going to see that the application crashes. As you can see in here, um, access violation error, and it, we see our A's. Um, and the stack, cool. That means we have an overflow and we have to find our offset. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the pattern create. Um, we're gonna use MS pattern create um, application um, binary to create 1,500 character of um, unique characters, let's say. And we are gonna use this in our skeleton exploit. And then we're gonna use an application called uh, MSF pattern offset to decide offset. Cool. Let's go about one by one. The length will be 1,500. I'm copying this, writing this in my skeleton exploit. I'm using Sublime um, in order to make it faster. I don't know if your V is working on something in your virtual machine. That's the easy way for me to handle it. So I'm running my Python script to create this entry U file, getting the same entry U file again. Um, so I'm gonna just send this file to my VU player. Oops. Um, and we'll get the crash. First, let's start immunity to see the, um, see the unique pattern to find the offsets. I'm attaching the process again. It's already running, as you can see. For some reason, when I was starting the application in Immunity, it was not working. So you need to start the application every single time. It happens sometimes with some of the applications when you're writing the exploit. Cool. I'm just going to send this test of entry file again. And I'm going to check Immunity. As you can see, we got a crash. And I'm checking the EIP value. I'm copying this value. And going back to my Kali box with MSF pattern offset. Uh, I'm going to find offset value now. Just showing you guys like how to find the offset pattern offset um, binary. It should be easy with the locate, locate comment. We're using minus Q um, and we are checking for the value 1012. We're going to write this in our exploit, skeleton exploit. Um, for EIP value, we need to see Bs. That's why I wrote four Bs, and then I wrote Cs for the remaining part. I'm just gonna run this exploit, exploit one.py in the new file that I just created. Um, I'm gonna get that file again with PSFTP and start immunity so that I can see the crash. And I'm supposed to see four B values, 42, 42, 42, 42 in my EIP uh, register. Start the immunity it takes a while. As you can see, I'm like showing the whole process in here. So um, if there shouldn't be any confusion. Test that I'm to you file. I'm getting it from PSFTP. It's in here. I'm just attaching it to um, VU player. As you can see, we got 42, 42, 42, 42 for EIP. That means our skeleton exploit works. Cool. What I'm going to do here is add more one of modules to see all these modules in here. I'm trying to find something more. Safe CH, ASLR, or any other um, prevention systems being false so that I wouldn't deal with it. 
and I'm seeing this best WA under this VU player. So there's this DLL file that I can actually use. There are a few of them um, that I can use. So I will just keep this in mind for later. But this is one step that you need to do. You need to check for modules and which module you're gonna use. So I'm just looking for um, a writable place in here um, for the best WA, I guess, DLL file. I'm just going through it. It should be down there, but down. Here we go. We found it. That's um, WA. Uh, should be possible if we actually search for this address directly. Let's go back to that uh, modules area with M and let's copy this address. Um, this is like the start of the block for this module. Um, just going back there to the CPU and going to that address. Cool. I'm just looking for a return address there. I found it. I will just write it for my EIP um, value, EIP overwrite. Um, it's executable, writable, so it should be fine. Cool. I found this return value. Um, just updated my skeleton exploit. Run this one more time. Um, send, the, send the interview file to my Windows box. Attaching the VU player to Immunity again with the current process. Sorry that we need to go through it every single time, but yeah, you'll do it the same anyway. So I just want to be realistic and show you instead of making the video short and everything is happening with the magic. <laughs> so we're attaching the test entry file there. Um, we're just breakpoint, putting a breakpoint in this return uh, and running the application with the test.entryU file. And as you can see, we will hit the breakpoint. That's cool. That means our EIP overwrite worked properly. Very cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this mono.robfunk comment, which will create a file um, that we will decide which Windows API function that we're gonna use. So that's an important step as well. Robfunk.txt file as you can see in here. And I'm looking at the output and I'm seeing kernel 32 virtual protect. Perfect, because this is one of the most basic methods you can use when you're writing your rock gadgets. I'm gonna use virtual protect function. I'm looking at its syntax, that's the syntax. From there, we're gonna write a plan. So we, we will know how to write a proper rock gadgets based on um, the syntax of the virtual protect function. I'm just writing all my notes in Sublime so that we can follow it up in here and I will write out uh, the plan and how to actually write the plan as well. Like as you can see in here, we will fill all these registers with uh, corresponding values and um, we can't write anything in the stack. We can execute anything in the stack. So we have to find the values um, from some ROP suggestion files. Cool. That's how we're going to create these ROP suggestion files with Mona. Um, I'm just specifying the modules um, as we decided before, the DLL files from the VU player. And we'll create two files, rob.txt and robsuggestions.txt. I will fire both of these files. For some of the easy comments, you can find everything in, in robsuggestions.txt. Um, if you are looking for more comments, you can always look for the main file, rob.txt. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So these are basically the instructions that we can use, uh, but first we need to know what we're doing, right? Um, all right, for EAX, we need to put the uh, 90s. Um, so in order to do that, we need some of the instructions that we can grab from these ROP files. So we will put this value into EAX and we will pop EAX into stack. What we need here is pop EAX instruction in one of these files, ROP text or ROP suggestions. I'm going to search for it. Oh my goodness, like <laughs> this is such an old um, text, text, text editor. So pop EAX, as you can see in the Rob suggestions uh, file, there's always these sections for pop EAX, pop EC, et cetera, um, in these uh, brackets. So I will get one of these addresses with pop EAX. So I can just use this in my script. Cool, so I'm gonna put this 90, 90, 90, 90, nops values, 
plus I'm going to put pop AX um, address. Cool. Um, that's the way to do it. I will just add this um, ROP, ROP um, variable that I created, which is equal to EAX. If you want, um, what you can do is for every single register that you um, already wrote with the current instructions, you can test it on immunity. Uh, but I'm not going to do it to not make the video two hours. Um, so yeah, that's the EAX. And we've already done it. According to our theory knowledge, it should work. For ECX, we need to um, have a writable pointer. So let's see how we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to run the player again. We're going to start immunity, attach the process. Um, same old story. Right, right, right. So yes, all these. I'm gonna to go to mono modules again. I'm looking for these best WA DLL files. I need to find a writable pointer, right? So I'm gonna to go to that place again in order to find a writable, uh, writable place. But I need to find something with um, enough privileges for me to execute as well. RW, um, let's see. Or W E under that P header. Yeah, it should be down there. Cool, that one. Yeah, under the P E header. I'm speaking faster than I, I click. <laughs> so we open this module and the uh, code for it. I just need to find a place that I can write um, writable pointer address. So I will just find a place that's empty, as you can see there. There are many, many areas that we can write. Um, I'll just choose one of these um, writable areas, let's say. These looks cool, starts with zero. Let's choose one of these, not like directly after it maybe. Yeah, that one looks good. I'll just choose that RS um, and we'll note it in my plans file. It's like writable pointer. And then we will, of course, find pop AX um, and the ROP suggestions files. Like I mentioned, for pop AX, pop ECX, as I read, these pop statements generally mentioned in a bracket file um, and pop suggestions that takes the file. When you are solving different ROP, um, ROP exercises, you will, you will realize these little nuance differences. Cool. I'm also mentioning this ECX chunks, uh, chunk and EAX chunks, etc. Which one affects which one? Because sometimes there will be cases that we can't find an instruction that um, that gives us the result on which register we're working on. So we need to deal with other registers and we need to note uh, which instruction affects which one, which register, cool. So ECX is done as well. These were like the easy guys. Um, we're just finding the value and popping the register to the stack. Cool, for the next one, we are working with EDX. So we need to put this value 40 um, as the FL new protect. So we need to put 40 bytes. Um, so we'll look into ROP suggestions and ROP TXT files to find something similar to what we're looking for. I'll look in EDX. Um, let's see if I can find something. I'm adding 40 bytes, so I'm looking for add EDX um, instructions. Couldn't find it on ROP suggestions, so TXT file. I'm looking for ROP TXT, add EDX, uh, anything similar for me to use for 40 bytes. Look, we couldn't find anything with at EDX for 40 bytes. Doesn't have to be 40 bytes directly, but doesn't work with EDX. So we will look for another register. EDX is pretty popular. So as you can see, there's at EDX 40, not uh, EDX 4, sorry. So if I use this address 16 times, it should add the bytes that I'm looking for. So cool. I will just use this, but just note that this also affects EDX register. So 
we need to keep this in mind. Cool. So we will zero out AX to not mix the values. We will add, um, add AX4 for 16 times in order to have the 040. And we need to swap AX and EDX to get the results that I want in EDX register. So I need to find for a value XOR AX AX return in order to clear the AX register. I already find it very quickly. Um, I write it there. Um, we mentioned this at AX4 already before. We just write the address down there. And we need to find a instructor essential start with exchange EX EX. And we found it very quickly as well. You'll be surprised um, how many instructions that we're looking for is already in memory. So yeah, that's the version to write it, struct pack. Uh, I'm not going to go through 521, but I'm assuming you already know these. Otherwise, please go check. I'm just writing the addresses that we found basically in order to have the perfect combination. So cool. But I also mentioned that EDX chunk affects EAX and EDX. When we are adding these to the variable later, rock variable, this will be important. So EDX is also done. Um, three, three of the registers are already done. Cool. Next one will be EBX, and we're going to put 201 bytes into um, EBX register. Let's see how we are going to do that. So I'm not going through like the plan, um, how that I write it and everything. You are supposed to go through the fuzzy security column and, and any other um, go to sources to learn what is ROP, what is that bypass, um, what is this virtual protect API function, what is the plan, how we, how we wrote this as well. So we need to put the value 201 into EBX. I don't think this is really possible to put this value, of put, find this value into ROP suggestion as well. So what we can do is that um, first, I need to check for EBX and um, adding this value into EBX. It's not possible. So I'm just looking for another register like EAX. And if there's an exchange function with EAX and EBX, then yeah, there is one. So that means that I can use EAX register when I'm playing around, which is a popular register, I'd say. Cool. So I can actually use EAX register and then I can exchange at the end. What we're going to do here is that we're going to play with XOR. This is like the perfect method to use here. Just remember the XOR, how, how does it work? A XOR B is C, B XOR C is A, then C XOR A is B. What we need to do is that we need to just find the value in the EAX register, and then we're gonna XOR it, and we're gonna get the value 201 uh, at the end. What does it mean? So we found this instruction XOR AAX and this random value in this, um, in this uh, address. So when I XOR this value with 201, we get a different value as you can see in here that ends with BC. And then if I XOR it again with the same value, I got that uh, 201. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use XOR on this. Uh, first, poppy AX, and then I'm going to XOR that value. And then I'm going to XOR again to get this uh, 201 value. I'm going to exchange the EAX and EBX register to get that value in EBX. If it's confusing, please go over that again, but it looks very, very straightforward, like what XOR means, how I'm going to use it with an um, with a, with a instruction that just uses EAX and a random value. And I'm just going to use this to put another value that's XORed already with 201 to get back to 01 at the end. Oh my god, I, I explained terribly, but hopefully that makes some sense. If you're not familiar with XOR, please go and check the manuals. Cool. EBX is also done. So next one will be ESE. We will leave it as it is. Uh, that means we are switching on to the next one, which is EBP. So we have to have it as call to ESP. Can we jump, call, push? So let's see. What does it mean? I'm looking for jump ESP function here with FFE4. Let's see if it's there. Um, um, yeah, in these modules, I already find one address. I just write it in here for jump ESP. That's very straightforward. And um, yeah, we need to just pop this value to EBP then. 
And I found this one, but there is return zero for, I need to get return zero anomaly. So we need to compensate for this um, for bytes that I'm mentioning here. Cool, we can just do that, no problem. We're gonna use rock knob um, for this compensation. And it's the same as the EIP value that we get um, before. So it's just gonna be the rock knob for the compensation uh, for two times. Same as EIP value that we got before. Cool. So that's gonna be our um, comments in our um, script. We're gonna get pop EPP, return, and then jump PSP. We're writing in the reverse order if you realized. Um, and then, then the compensation for um, 0x4 with the return. And we are using the rock knob um, that we used before with EIP. Very straightforward. If you're not familiar, don't be afraid. You're just gonna learn it in time. So um, yeah, new concept in every single video. Cool, this is done as well. After EBP, there is ESI registered common. So this is gonna be pointer to virtual protect. Uh, the memory address of API call virtual protect is already known. Um, that's why I mentioned this in the plan. If you don't know what this means, again, I'm not gonna explain everything. Please go ahead and check the manuals like Bibles, let's say, the fuzzy security and column. Um, yeah, we need to value the, we need to value start there, um, but we couldn't find anything with ESI, which is not surprising that happens. So what we're gonna do is of course, we're gonna go with this popular register such as EAX. Yeah, they're always, always doing that. So first we need to check if there's um, exchange EAX, ESI um, instruction in here. We're lucky there is such thing is generally one. Um, so we're just noting the address in here. So what's our plan? We're gonna pop pointer to API into EAX. Then we will move the D word value held at the address into EAX um, with the pointer to EAX. And then we will exchange the EAX to ESI. I know that requires a bit of assembly knowledge. So um, giving you the formula here, hope, hope. Hopefully you understand what I mean. Uh, otherwise just pause the video and try to understand what these assembly instructions mean. I will skip to the next one, which is EDI. It is a uh, rope knob, same as EIP that we already, already decided before. So we're just gonna find a pointer to pop EDI, which will be needed um, as we did it for every single register. And then the same as rope knob. Then push AD chunk, we need to add at the end of our ROP gadget. This is very straightforward. Um, we're just gonna clean this ROP variable that we wrote before, which was equal to EAX, but we are changing it a bit. Um, how are we writing it first? We're writing the registers that are affecting other registers as well, such as EDX, ESI, et cetera, because they all um, affect EAX register. At the end, we are writing the registers that are not affecting any other registers, such as EBP, EDI, EAX, EC, et cetera. And then we are adding the push AD uh, chunk that's needed at the end. Uh, we're gonna get a really small calculator, um, uh, calculator shell code, calc shell code. We're just adding it in here. Uh, you can find it from Fuzzy Security's website um, if you need something small like that. I'm just gonna add some knobs here. Um, we generally do that, you guys know. And the typo there, I will collect um, correct later. Cool. Um, yeah, we're just gonna add the uh, ropes in here. And the video, I didn't realize I did a typo, but I corrected it later. So we're gonna add the shellcode for calc and we're gonna save that file. Um, we're gonna run the exploit. You don't see it, I correct that. Nope, <laughs> nope. Cool. We just get the file with PSFTP for the final version. We are running the player again. Um, attaching the immunity or without attaching, just sending the test file. Um, I think even if it crashes, it sends the calc. Um, but yeah, it's the easiest way to attach it to immunity to see the shell code or if you're getting the reverse shell, we just go with calc, so which is the easiest one, but you don't have to do that. When you did that, boom, calculator exam, meaning we got um, code execution. Cool, so how do you feel? Was it a lot of knowledge? Was it like so intense knowledge, let's say? 
I know that it's not easy. Um, yeah, in the beginning of the video, I said that when you go through it again and again, it, it becomes easy. But in general, this concept is not easy. If you're comparing this to stack overflows, um, the expert development journey is very straightforward, actually. There are a lot of things to learn. Um, I'm realizing how less I learn every single time I learn something new, but it's very straightforward if you just started in your journey. Start with um, the most basic stack buffer overflows, vanilla buffer overflows. Like in the beginning, it may look complicated, but at some point you will realize how easy it is. Then you will learn different concepts like CEH, a structured exception handler, and then um, egg hunting. And there are like different topics there. Um, you will learn a few bypass techniques with ASLR, um, which are like still basic level, but there will be different techniques that you're learning. After that, there are like a bit more complex topics are coming, like, um, sorry, I forgot that. There's also a heap spring that you can learn with, in addition to the previous uh, techniques that I mentioned. After that, there are more more topics coming, such as step bypass, these drop gadgets, because it requires a lot of assembly knowledge. So it's not only exploitation, but community debugger and writing few Python, Python code. Um, code. So it includes more, more skills, let's say. Then you're learning these. Um, and after that, there's some browser exploitation, heap exploitation, which is a very different concept when you're comparing to stack overflows because the structure of the heap and the stack is very different and you're learning new topics and you're realizing, I didn't know some of these before. Like, what did I learn so far? When you learn these, then you're realizing you are so far just in user land. Then you will start learning the kernel land, which is also pretty different when you're getting into Windows world let's say um but yeah it's it's pretty pretty fun and the thing is that besides doing um like hunting OSE in topics let's say and trying to learn everything my in my own way uh using public resources there are cool websites that you can use to actually um, ace your skills let's say i love this word there is a website that i found it mostly includes um linux uh, binary um, and writing ROP exploits on that ROP Imperium. It's pretty cool. I'm also working on it in the background and I believe I can also do some videos on that. I love creating videos on the topics that I'm learning and start to ace, let's say, um, because it shows that, okay, I learned this and there's a big check that I'm writing. Okay, I learned this, I created the video, um, I can go to the next level. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, Okay, what did we do? I'm just talking about a few next videos. If you are done with depth uh, bypass, turn off the video already. Otherwise, I'm just mentioning what I'm gonna do for the next videos. I'm planning to create another Rob Gadgets uh, video with Rob Imperium, but also maybe some Linux exploits and using different tools, not only um, tools with, um, with GUI, like um, this uh, debuggers, um, then I will have a video on heap overflow. I got a message from on LinkedIn from another colleague of mine mentioning that he was working on heap exploits and he had some problems to understand the concept. Um, believe me, my friend, uh, we all we all have this trouble with heap exploits, but I'm planning to get into a bit more theory of heap exploits, um, not heap spring. Heap spring is a method to deliver a payload. Heap overflow is actually exploitation on heap. It's not very popular in the latest Windows systems, but in the previous ones, we will start with SP1, SP2, and we will um, start showing different methods on different operating systems. I think I will create one long video on starting with theory, what is heap exploits, um, just trying to show it in my way. I'm not showing any research in here, just using the previous research to talk about it with you guys. I think I can also create one video on heap spring. It's also a very fun topic to discuss. And my plan is that I'm still learning though, um, but I want to create a video series on kernel exploits because so far I couldn't find anything public. Um, there are generally private trainings on this, but yeah, information should be accessible freely, right? And yeah, uh, even if I'm not an expert on this, I think I can create a video um, on topics that I learned so that you would just tell me about something that I never learned before uh, when I'm diving into these topics and maybe I will learn something completely new and um, 
I will be enlightened. Um, besides that, I want to create two videos on Windows Debugger and WinDBG and IDA Pro. I'm still learning my way in it, um, so I'm not an expert. Do not expect something of a content that uh, an expert that uses IDA Pro for the, I don't know, for their entire career. Do not expect such thing, but yeah, why not? Um, let me see if there's anything else. I want to create a video on assembly as well, but there are courses around this. I also took uh, a few of them. I don't believe you can squeeze assembly into one video, but maybe we can like talk about the most important parts, most important instructions, and um, so you can find your way around that. There are still some topics that I'm working on, on browser exploitation for Firefox clients at GIT, Safari, Edge, and also guest host uh, escapes, VMware internals. Um, I'm working on these still. But yeah, that's a progress. And I'll start sharing more videos um, on the topics that I mentioned. So just drop a comment if you want something specific on the topics that I mentioned already. I saw a comment, somebody was mentioning we need more web content. I'm sorry, I'm not creating web content anymore. Um, not planning to. So that's that may not be the place for you if you're looking for web content. There are amazing content creators out there. So I'm sure you will find your way uh, there. But if you're looking for more exploit development content, ping me guys. And we'll see you um, in the next video. Cheers.